Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Indiana ACAC Virtual College Fair presented by ShriveScan. I'm just going to go over a few housekeeping items for our guests uh, that are joining us tonight. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to use the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to ask any questions at any time throughout the night to any presenter that you have a question for. Just make sure that you're addressing who you would like to answer that question. And then remembering that your camera and microphones are off, so you don't have to worry about us seeing you. You just uh, have to uh, sit back and enjoy the night and enjoy all the information coming at you as you uh, make college decisions this upcoming year. As well as uh, some other sessions, there's going to be one more session after this one that you are free to sign up for. You can go back to strivescan.com slash Indiana and sign up for more sessions if you want. And if you want to ever look back on this recording for this particular session or any of the ones that you view tonight, you can do so by going to that same website that you registered on, which is strivescan.com slash Indiana. So we are gonna get started with our first presenter of the evening from Beloit College. We'll give them a couple uh, seconds to get up and running with screen share. But I just wanna to continue to encourage you to ask those questions throughout the evening and sign up for any other sessions you feel uh, intrigued by. So here we go with Beloit College. Great, thank you so much, Julian. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this awesome presentation. Um, I'm very excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Yana Fritz. I am an admission counselor at Beloit College, uh, but more importantly, I am actually a very, very proud alum of Beloit. Uh, I graduated just recently in May of 2020. So, um, you know, all these experiences that I'm gonna share with you are very lived um, and near dear in my heart uh, because, you know, I experienced them myself. So Beloit College is a small, liberal arts college in Wisconsin um, and we are actually Wisconsin oldest college so we're very proud of that um, and since we've been around for quite some time we have managed to attract a very diverse group of students um, economically racially and culturally um, especially with our high international student population we are very proud of that um, so we have students coming from all over and you know because of that we have very um, curious and you know these very interesting students that are interested in many many different subjects you know we have a long of majors. Um, this is just our most popular ones here. But because of that, you know, it's often very difficult to choose just one major or just one interest if you um, happen to have many. So that's why we have such a large number of our students that are double majors, some triple majors even, double minors, whatever it is. Um, we really allow our students to kind of um, dabble in a little bit of everything while they're here. And we do that very successfully um, with our high success rate of graduation, um, our graduates, and you know our students are very well employed after graduation or pursuing um, a graduate degree um, post Beloit. So we do that very well um, because we support our students very well while they're here in their four years. And we do that um, more recently by reimagining our um, advising at Deloitte. We have a new program called the Advanced Mentoring Program, and that is very focused on, um, you know, our, our promise and our new devotion to our students to, to help them with, you know, the coming into college process and also helping you while you're here. And we do that by um, within 72 hours of you saying, you know, you're choosing the light, this is where you're going, we will match you with an academic advisor. And that person will be with you kind of throughout the summer or since you deposit um, and all the way through your first two years here. And they're gonna be that first contact to really help you out with anything you need um, at the Lloyd. And, you know, they're going to introduce you to different alums, different um, just people, you know, networking, all of those workshops, whatever it is, um, to really help you in your future and in your time here. And we also have a new program called our Career Channels. Um, and those are very kind of specialty groups built in um, helping our students with internships or any kind of lived and, and real experiences in the real world um, to really connect what you're doing in class outside of the classroom into the real world um, through, you know, Beloit is very very luckily located um, in between Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago. So you have lots of different opportunities. And these career channels really just kind of help you connect um, your class into that real world and finding those opportunities for your future. Um, and, you know, we do that and we know how to help you very well because our campus is very designed for you, for students. Um, you know, I, I lived here myself for four years, so um, I absolutely loved it. And, you know, most recently we opened our new student union and recreation center 
there called the powerhouse. And that is the photo you're seeing there. Um, it was an old coal powered um, energy plant and was recently renovated into this awesome new student union uh, with a new pool, our new health and wellness center is in there, um, amazing workout facilities, a new cafe, study spaces, anything you would need to really be successful um, as a student, non-academically would be in there, you know, just a time to kind of relax and do your homework or whatever it is. Um, but beyond that, we also have amazing athletic programs here. We have 18 varsity teams um, and we compete at the division three level. We have amazing special interest houses and kind of group and club oriented um, housing options, clubs, everything for um, to make sure that you're having kind of that extra stimulation outside of your academics and, and seeing some really fun things on campus while you're here since we are a very residential campus. Um, and, you know, having that campus spot has mattered, uh, or I guess has never mattered as much as it has now um, during COVID. And, you know, our Beloit College has really been um, extremely innovative in coming up with new ideas to um, help our students and continue to support them during this challenging time. And we're actually recognized as the number five most innovative college in the country. Um, so we're very proud of that. But, you know, it, it's because we have this awesome new Beloit Action Plan. Um, and that's kind of, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into this plan. But as a kind of a snapshot of it, it's just a set of academic, personal, and financial support programs in this time. Um, but more specific to Indiana, we actually have a new program called our Midwest Flagship Match. And that is a promise to our students our incoming students that we will match the tuition um, cost of the University of, of Indiana uh, Bloomington. So that tuition cost of around $11,000 is going to be the same cost that it would um, be for Beloit. So, you know, you got this beautiful, amazing private uh, education, you know, your class sizes are going to be around 12 students. Um, for the price of the state flagship university of Indiana. So I think it's an amazing deal. Um, and, you know, we're just trying to make college as accessible to everyone as we can, um, you know, especially in COVID situations change um, very often. So uh, in addition to that, we also have an amazing new statement of culture on campus that was completely written by our students. Um, they set the behavioral expectations for campus life. And that's extremely important because they know what they can do, what rules they can follow, what limitations they have. Um, so having our students participate so actively in that program really encourages um, a healthy uh, life on campus. And, you know, if this sounds like you, if this is a student that you, if you're a student, you think you belong here. Um, I just want you to know that our application project or process is extremely holistic. We focus on your essay, your recommendations, extracurricular there's you know more than GPA um, you're more than just a number here so if um, you like Beloit College if you would consider applying you know let me know um, here's my information on the screen and I'd love to hear from you soon thank you awesome thank you so much for that and we are going to give some time to Marquette University to start getting their screen share up and running so I just want to continue to encourage everybody to pop in some questions in that q and I know our Presenters are eager to answer any questions that you have this evening about the admissions process and we'll leave it over to Marquette University. Hi everyone, my name is Jeanette Von Hayden. I am here from Marquette University, which is located in the great state of Wisconsin. Um, super fun to see other Wisconsin schools on this call today, uh, but we are located in the city of Milwaukee. Marquette, if you are not aware, is a perfectly medium-sized institution. We have right around uh, just over 8,000 undergraduate students, um, which means that you're going to have an average class size of about 20 to 25 students, um, but you have all of the benefits of a large institution within a larger city. So when you're looking for those internship opportunities, Milwaukee is a hub within the state of Wisconsin. So there are Fortune 500 companies that you can intern with. There are a lot of great connections for undergraduate graduate research, uh, but you don't have to compete against thousands and thousands of students for those experiences. When it comes to majors, we have just over 80 majors for students housed in seven direct entry colleges, which means when you apply to Marquette, you're actually applying right into the college you want and starting that curriculum from day one. So it's not like you have to take two years of gen eds and then apply into your um, your major, you're going to start uh, and hit the ground running right away from day one. And that's really nice for a lot of students um, to help give you that exposure to your field, help affirm if this is the path that you want to be on. Uh, but it also helps those of us like myself who are undecided um, because you can explore all different areas as you uh, start exploring Marquette as well. 
One of the things that really sets Marquette apart is this word on your screen, Jesuit. So we are a private Catholic university within the Jesuit traditions. The Jesuits, if you are not familiar, are rooted in this idea of access to education and that in order to create change and in order to be a part of something bigger than yourself, you need to do this through education and that it should be accessible to all. So when you come to Marquette, um, you'll recognize this in a couple of different ways, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom, uh, but most importantly through service. Uh, service is really important to our students. Um, about 84% of our students will elect into service at some point in their time with Marquette. Um, and each year we complete about half a million hours of volunteer work. In fact, this year we are scheduled to break that record, which we are really excited for um, because we know with COVID, face-to-face -face interactions are pretty limited. So service is definitely a big part of who we are as an institution. About 50% of our students identify as Catholic. Um, you do not have to be Catholic to attend Marquette. Uh, you can still choose to attend Mass or anything like that, but it's totally up to you um, how involved you want to get into the faith side of our campus. One of the other great benefits to coming to Marquette is our location in Milwaukee. If you have not been, I highly recommend checking out Milwaukee. As a Wisconsinite, it is one of my favorite cities to visit. Um, there's a ton for you to do, both uh, related to your professional life as well as your personal life. Milwaukee has the nickname of City of Festivals because there's always something happening for our students. Um, you'll see we are right on Lake Michigan, um, and we are about an hour train ride away from the city of Chicago. So uh, if you're not finding something you want to do in Milwaukee, you can hop on the train, get to Chicago very fast, and get back to campus as well. And then, of course, we want to talk about involvement, because this is a really important part of your education. Uh, of course, you're coming here to earn a degree and to get those A's in your classes, but it's also about engaging outside of the classroom. Um, at Marquette, we have over 350 different clubs and organizations for you to get involved in, uh, both related to your major, but also fun things for you to do. Uh, Marquette is also known for our basketball team. Um, this year, we won't talk about it. We are coming off a real big loss today at two o'clock, which hurts my heart a little bit. Um, it means our season's done. But basketball is a really big tradition at the university. And so there are things like that for students to engage in to really help enhance your student experience and your time with us. Now, how do you get here if you're interested? So Marquette is uh, on rolling admission. We don't have early deadlines or anything like that. And we are test optional. So we went test optional two years ago pre-COVID and will continue to be test optional into the future. Um, it's really important to us when we talk about that mission of access to education that we take away that test score barrier for some students. And so you do not have to submit a test score in order to be admitted to any of our academic colleges. Um, or to receive any of our scholarship or scholars programs. So you're more than welcome to apply into any of those programs uh, and still receive full consideration for admission and scholarship. I should also talk about our scholars programs because um, our some great options for you if you're looking to earn an advanced degree. Um, Marquette is known for our dental school and our law school, and we do have some fast tracks to that. We also have a fast track for students who are interested in uh, physician assistant studies or physical therapy, and all of those are uh, eligible for incoming freshmen to apply into. So if this sounds uh, like it's interesting to you, I recommend reaching out to our team. I am one of four admissions counselors that recruit in the Illinois and Indiana area. And we're really excited to be partnering and working with you as you start your college journey. Um, and if you're interested in visiting, we will offer visits to younger students starting right after May 1st. Um, and you can come with your family to come visit our campus. But thanks so much for having me. All right, thank you so much. And we're gonna get the floor ready for Northland College. And while we do that, just wanna encourage anybody who is interested in signing up for any other sessions later on, there's one more session uh, in the next hour. It's starting at, I believe, six o'clock. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can go back to the website and sign up for it. So we'll leave it over to Northland College. I think you're on mute there, Tori. <laughs> Oh man, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Well, 
I'm Tori, and I'm an admissions counselor at Northland College. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So the college was founded in 1892, and Northland's a community of about 600 students um, from all across the country and a couple of different states, uh, all across the country and a couple of different countries as well. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're located in the Shawamigan Bay area of northern Wisconsin, about an hour from Duluth and about 40 minutes from the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, um, right at that delta there. <laughs> um, and Northland's main campus is just over 100 acres in size. Our borders are really just the beginning, though. We're right between the city of Ashland, which is a population of about 8,200, and almost a million acres of national forest. Um, the city itself is vibrant um, with great historic buildings, cozy restaurants, coffee shops, biking, walking trails, co-op theater, um, the harbor, and all that great kind of stuff. Um, it was really shaped by 100 years of incredible history. <laughs> We're also part of a tradition of proud liberal arts colleges, but we've got a twist. We focus a lot on sustainability and social justice, and this building here is Wheeler Hall. It was the first to be built on campus, and today it houses our humanities programs and courses. Speaking of programs, our span the arts and sciences with notable Northland specific classes like natural resources, um, outdoor education, sustainable community development, and more. With new minors in sustainable agriculture, sports management, and climate studies. We're also NCAA Division Three for athletics with 14 different varsity sports and about 38% of our student body participating in those sports. Um, they're one of my favorite parts of campus, getting to go to games and that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to hopefully next year. <laughs> um, Northland's commitment to the environment um, and environmental education has been noticed around the US by some notable organizations. We're recognized as a cool school by Sierra Magazine. We joined the Real Food Challenge. Uh, we're an Eco Week school we divested from fossil fuels back in 2017. We're also Wisconsin's first B-campus. Another defining characteristic of Northland is our strong sense of community with about 20 different clubs, three different student publications, a gear rental outposts, and plenty of events throughout the year. It's a really great place to make friends and get a wonderful education. It's the sort of place where when you walk down these sidewalks, people just say hi to you, even if you've never met them. Our location also underwrites everything that we do. Central to our sense of place is Lake Superior. We're just 10 blocks from it, and Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world. Um, it's about 350 miles long, and it's roughly the size of North Carolina. It's so vast that it even creates its own weather patterns. Over the course of almost 130 years, Northland has developed a style of education that really thrives in this environment most notably providing experiential learning in abundance, whether it's in the field, in the lab, or out in the community. For example, our biology and natural resource majors spend a ton of time out in the field. And Professor, Professor Michelle Small said it best when she said, I love that Northland College is a school where you can know your students by their names, where you can do your job in depth, giving 100%, expecting the same in return and reaping the rewards as you see real progress in your students' growth and development. She's been teaching at Northland for about 47 years, and she still holds that same opinion. Let's talk applying. It's free to apply at Northland, and letters of recommendation aren't required, nor are essays. Um, if you haven't been able to take the ACT or SAT, that's totally okay. We're test optional this year, and review for us takes about two weeks. We also take the Common App as well. And let's talk scholarships and aid. The total cost of attendance for Northland next year is about $49,000, though nobody pays that much. Our academic scholarships start at $19,000 per year, and there are merit-based scholarships available as well. Be sure to send us your FAFSA to qualify for things like work study and all that great stuff. And in conclusion, be sure to check out our social media, um, see more of what students are up to these days, and please do reach out with questions, um, and I'll pass it back to Julian. Thanks. All right, thank you so much. And we're gonna get uh, the floor ready for University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, again, if there's any questions that our guests have tonight, you can put that in the Q&A chat box and just make sure that you're addressing the college that you want to answer your questions. And we'll leave the floor over to University, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Julian, hi everyone. My name is Nate Rosenberg. Uh, I'm with UW-Madison. I'm an admissions counselor there. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. 
Uh, so just to get us started, I'm just going to, you know, uh, outline some numbers, kind of center ourselves, look at the big picture. So we were founded in 1848, so uh, a little bit, little bit of history right there. Uh, they're not as old as some of the colleges and universities here with us. Um, and as you can see, we are a little bit of a larger university with over 30,000 undergrads and um, a little bit over 7,000 first years every year. Uh, but as you can see too, we do have a student faculty ratio of about 20 to one. So, you know, you're gonna have kind of the mix of that, that, that big university feel, but also your class sizes are gonna be very manageable. Um, though, of course, you know, uh, when you start off and maybe some of the intro levels or classes will be bigger, but as you work your way up, kind of get more specialized, uh, you'll get to those smaller class sizes. Uh, and I should note too that for those 7,000 first years, a little bit over half of that, about 3,600 or so, usually come from Wisconsin. And then the other uh, 3,000 some will come from the rest of the country uh, and the countries around the world as well. So really at the center of UW-Madison is uh, the Wisconsin idea. And this is our guiding principle that the university should improve people's lives beyond the classroom. So this is gonna span our teaching, our research, our outreach and our public service. And just another way of thinking about it is that what happens on campus won't stay on campus. I think um, some really great examples of this are, you can see here, we're a top producer of Peace Corps volunteers. Um, and I really like to talk about our Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems. Uh, they developed a curriculum on sustainable agriculture for use in high schools. So what's being developed on campus isn't staying on campus, it's being shared with the wider Wisconsin community and the wider national and global community. And I'll just mention too, uh, Mu Capital, they are a marketing club and they provide guides and assistance to small businesses in Madison. So what's being learned in the classroom is being applied in this extracurricular context, which is super cool. So to talk about academics, um, you know, at this point in your college search, you may know what you want to study, you, or you may have no idea what you want to study. Uh, both are totally valid. I didn't declare my major until my sophomore year of, of college. So we, fortunately, we ha do have um, 125 majors and over 70 certificates. Uh, certificates are similar to minors and other campuses. So we're going to have um, uh, what you're looking for if you have a specific major in mind, or you have that room to explore to find what you are passionate about. Uh, I should say that uh, our, if you apply to University of Wisconsin-Madison, you apply to the university as a whole, and then uh, you choose your school and college later down the road, you can choose what you want to study. Um, that being said, our School of Business, our College of Engineering, they do offer freshman direct entry, so you can apply to enter those schools and college, that, that school and college directly. So just keeping that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about the application process. Um, sorry if you can hear my dog behind me. Yeah, he's doing some stretches. Uh, and you know the other part of uh, finding your fit, finding that college for you is look, thinking about uh, the social part of it, finding your community. That's maybe not as important as the academics, but it is up there. Uh, we have over a thousand student organizations. Uh, these range from the Badger Cheese Club to Juop Acapella to the Madison Literary Journal. Uh, we also have a lot of cultural communities, uh, those identity-based organizations. Uh, we have uh, groups ranging from the Multicultural Student Center to the Black Cultural Center to the Hillel to a Gender and Sexuality Campus Center. Um, so basically, uh, we're able to you're able to find those identity-based organizations as well. Uh, arts and festivals are also super big on campus. Um, there's galleries throughout campus. Uh, we have very varied uh, theater productions, you know, ranging from Evil Dead the Musical to Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, so a wide range right there. Um, Greek life is an option as well, not something that students have to do to find, uh, find their people on campus, but definitely is an option. And of course, athletics are also very important on campus, uh, whether that's an intramural or sports club, you know, there's more kind of informal uh, students playing with each other. And of course, we are part of the Big Ten, so students may elect to participate in uh, big Ten athletics as an athlete, of course, but it's also really fun to support the community, right? If there's a game in town, everybody's gonna be wearing red to show support for the team. And it's just fun to support the community and support your friends. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap it up then by talking about our holistic admission review, uh, kind of thinking about, you know, next steps, you, I've sold you on UW-Madison, now what do you have to think about? So we do have a holistic admission review. And so the four things we're really gonna look at, uh, we're gonna look at that academic profile. We're gonna look at your transcript. Uh, you know, we wanna see that you're challenging yourself. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, big grain of salt, we know that not every high school has the same rigor available, but we just wanna see that you're taking advantage of what is presented to you. And then for community involvement and leadership and service, they kind of go hand in hand. We're really just looking to see that sustained involvement. We wanna see what you're passionate about. Uh, we wanna see what interests you, what, what you wanna do when you're on campus. Uh, 
we do require two essays uh, and one of our essays, our supplemental essays, why Wisconsin? So that's your chance to talk about, you know, why Wisconsin, not just what you want to say, but also what you want to participate with on campus. Um, and I, another caveat too, I, I like to really point out, you know, we recognize too that not every student has the same opportunities, right? You know, uh, taking care of a family member, taking care of babysitting for your baby sister, or baby brother is just as important as being president of some club, right? We just want to see what you do with your time. And for campus and program fit, I mentioned a supplemental essay of why Wisconsin. Uh, so uh, that's your chance to really talk about, you know, again, why Wisconsin, what you want to do on campus. And of course, we're going to look again at the transcript for that, right? We want to make sure that you're able to succeed. We don't want to set you up for failure uh, on campus. Um, but again, very holistic admissions review because uh, we want to make sure that we're giving every student uh, the, the chance they deserve to really uh, show themselves off. Um, so I'll end with just uh, this screen right here to find out more information. Um, feel free to type any questions in the chat or you, know, you can just Google UW Madison admissions and that'll take you to all these places as well. Uh, I'll pass it back to you, Julian. Alrighty, thank you so much. And we are moving on to our final uh, presenter of the evening, University of Alabama. And while uh, she is getting her screen ready, just want to encourage anybody for last minute uh, qu questions and answers, you can go ahead and use that Q&A chat box. And then if you also want to sign up for any other sessions this evening, you are free to do so at strivescan.com slash Indiana. All right, University of Alabama, you have the floor. Thanks so much. Uh, my name is Jennifer Potts and I am a regional recruiter with the University of Alabama. Regional meaning I actually live in the region. I live in Fishers, Indiana, and I'm responsible for recruiting students from the state of Indiana to the University of Alabama, and I've been doing this for about eight years. So University of Alabama, otherwise known as UA, Bama, the capstone, or that school that says Roll Tide. Okay, so a little bit about where we are. We're located approximately eight hours from Indianapolis, about six hours from Southern Indiana and about 10 hours from Northern Indiana or we're quick flight into Birmingham where we're about an hour away. So Tuscaloosa is a small college town, but lots of college excitement. So hundreds of shops and restaurants. Students tend to take advantage of our better weather, especially in the winter time to do outdoor exploration. This year, we had a rare quarter of an inch of snow, which shut our school down for a day and a half. So we have about 38,000 students, but fun fact, 277 students of those are on campus from the state of Indiana. So 57% um, of our students are from out of state, which makes us a bit unique. And um, the thing I hear from these students who are on campus is that it's not as scary as they thought it would be to go somewhere where they didn't know anybody. Uh, students talk about uh, nobody knows anybody, so it's really easy to make friends. This is a glimpse into our uh, 2020 freshman class. So just want to point out that we do attract really great students. This is not what we require, however. So for admission, we tend to look for students with about a 3.0 GPA. I wanna point out that we are going to be updating our admissions policy come this summer because we were test optional for our 2021 students. Uh, and we'll plan to make that announcement this summer regarding 2022. We do have a very simple application process. We don't require uh, essay, resume, or letter of recommendation. We are moving to the common application this summer. Um, and we do encourage students to be accepted prior to January 15th uh, for full, full scholarship consideration, but we are rolling admissions. So a bit about our academic programs, you'll find a great balance between strong academics at Alabama and a great campus life. We have over 200 degree programs, unique programs like our accelerated master's programs and STEM and create path to the MBA, which gives our students the opportunity to complete your undergrad and graduate degrees in a shortened amount of time. Um, we are a major research institution, so that's in, intertwined in all of our academic programs, um, as well as uh, we have an honors college, which is kind of our small campus community feel within a large research setting. I wanna point out on this slide that we were second in the country for internship placement. 
uh, by Princeton Review this year. So we're super proud about that. And we also encourage students to spend some time abroad. Uh, we have experiences as short as a week, as long as a year, uh, really anywhere around the world. I almost took this out because I'm long-winded and I needed to cut this short today, but I just want to point out that this is not something that's just an Alabama thing. So all of the schools represented tonight, as well as all the schools across the country, want you to be successful, uh, both in and out of the classroom. And we have resources for you uh, to take advantage of. If you need help in the classroom, you need tutoring, if you need mental health counseling, just know that we're here and that we're cheering you on. Um, the campus life at the University of Alabama is very exciting. We have a big sense of campus pride. It's easy to meet new people and get involved in new activities. We have over 600 clubs and organizations, large Greek life, large campus recreation program, a very full events calendar. We log over a million hours of community service each year, uh, which we're super proud about. And as you'll see at the bottom of the screen, we have some really great uh, eating options. And of course, can't pass up this screen without uh, given a roll tie to our 18th national championship that we earned in football this year. And I should probably say that our men's basketball team is super pumped to come out to Indiana for the NCAA tournament uh, here soon. Uh, great housing options. 50% um, of our housing on campus, you don't actually share your bedroom, just your bathroom with one other student. So super fancy. Um, we do have some great scholarship opportunities. We have both automatic merit-based scholarships based on your GPA and your test score, but we also have competitive scholarships that focus on GPA as well as your resume. We have stellar opportunities for national merit, national recognition uh, scholars, and that goes above the cost of tuition. Um, we will make updates to this uh, come summer, so stay tuned for that um, announcement as well. And then we'd love to have you visit campus. Uh, we are offering both virtual and in-person opportunities. So certainly keep in touch if you're planning a visit to Tuscaloosa, we'd love to have you soon. And then finally, my contact information. So I am here for you as your resource. So if you have any questions about the University of Alabama, I am happy to help. I wish you the best with your college search process and roll tide. All righty, thank you so much to all our presenters. Uh, because we have some time left, I am going to share my screen and we're gonna do a round robin. And the question is going to be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll go ahead and get started back with the first college, uh, Bethel College, and we'll go down the line from there. So what is your favorite event or campus tradition? And everybody can go ahead and turn their videos on. Great. Uh, well, at Beloit, um, especially being a student who has gone through all of that, uh, my favorite tradition is spring day. It's a day in the spring where, um, you know, when it finally is nice out after that long winter, uh, we cancel classes for a day. We invite, you know, bumper cars, um, obstacle courses, giant inflatables. Classes are canceled for the day and students are kind of just having fun, um, eating a lot of cotton candy and just hanging out with their friends. So it's just a great moment to, to kind of decompress um, in the middle of the semester. And it's really, really fun. So that's my favorite thing that happens every year. That sounds like so much fun. Um, I would say that Marquette's tradition that I love the most um, is our hunger cleanup. And so I mentioned that service is really important at Marquette, uh, so much so that each fall we cancel classes for one day and our students get to volunteer in the community. It is our longest day of service each year. Um, and we partner with over 50 different nonprofits in the Milwaukee community. Um, and it engages over half of our campus community. Um, I'd say my favorite Northland event has to be the everybody party. So at the beginning of each year, our first year students are welcomed up onto campus across one of our bridges with a big Irish drum. It's a whole like corny thing. It's super fun. And they do live um, music, local food, that kind of stuff. And then when students graduate, they go back across the other bridge. It's a whole goofy thing, but it's my favorite. <laughs> I think my favorite tradition at UW-Madison is, I don't know if it's just a tradition per se, but uh, 
at sporting events, especially when they'll play uh, jump around by, I see everyone nodding, uh, by House of Pain. It's, you know, it's, it's silly, but it's fun to see everyone just dancing around, having a fun time together. Those are the kind of traditions I enjoy where everyone's just doing something together. It really builds up that spirit of community. Now I'm gonna have that song stuck in my head. Um, so at the University of Alabama, we have lots of traditions. And I would say probably the majority of those traditions that are my favorite, center around our athletic events. So football on a Saturday at Bryant-Denny where you cheer on the Crimson Tide with 101,000 other fans uh, is probably my favorite tradition. Awesome, awesome, great answers. Uh, and because we still have some time left on the clock, uh, I'm gonna pose another question. Um, and this one, is going to be what advice would you give somebody going through the college search process? Uh, so we'll start right back up at the top again, but what advice would you give somebody going through the college search process? That's a tough question. Um, I think my best advice is really try to get out and see campus. Um, you know, on these presentations or just on the websites, a lot of these colleges can really look the same and you don't really know how to feel in one place until you get there and walk the, the sidewalks and see the campus life, see the squirrels, whatever it is on campus and really find your place there. Um, hopefully you'll kind of have this feeling that that is where you belong. Um, and that comes from a campus visit. So I know right now COVID is a little difficult, but if you can get out and see a school, I think that really, really helps. Um, my piece of advice is to pay attention to deadlines. Um, while we are humans and we really want to work with you and support you in your process, and I know you're managing many, many schools, pay attention to deadlines because oftentimes those are non-moving um, and they are very strict. So pay attention, keep a spreadsheet, whatever keeps you organized in this process. Um, I think mine would be, don't be afraid to ask questions. We're here to help you and we want to help you find the right spot for you. So ask us anything. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Good. Yeah, Tori, you stole mine. Uh, I thought I'd echo what you said. You know, I think it's so important to ask questions. You know, there really is no such thing as a dumb question. It's, it's four years of your life, four plus years of your life. It's a big chunk of change. Uh, you know, college universities, we're not always the best about defining terms. So we're throwing out throwing around words, terms, phrases that you don't understand, ask us to define what you what what uh, what we're meaning because it's super important. So uh, thanks Tori for uh, saying it. <laughs> so my piece of advice for you is really to relax. Like things tend to work out the way they're supposed to. So let's say you don't get into your first choice school. Uh, relax about that. It's gonna work out okay. Um, and I mentioned this briefly in my presentation, but college is a tough time for some students. So it's a tough transition from high school to college. I just want you again to be aware that uh, we are here and we're cheering for you and we all have great resources for you. So relax through the process, enjoy the ride. Uh, it'll be worth it. You guys are good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in one more here uh, because we get three questions. We get to uh, pose if we have some time. So you guys are making great on time. So I am going to pose this uh, last question here. And that one is going to be, and you might have covered this already. If not, a great chance to do it is give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Something that's interesting or fun about it. Something that you might not find on the website. Um, you know, maybe it's that you don't you don't get to see something interesting until your junior year, whatever it may be. What's that interesting or fun fact? Um, well, one of my favorite facts about Beloit College is, um, well, first we have two teaching museums on campus and one of them is our Logan Museum of Anthropology and um, we are very big in anthropology here we have an amazing program and that's mostly because of an alum and an old professor here named Roy Chapman Andrews um, and it's rumored and, and almost confirmed that he actually inspired the character of Indiana Jones um, and I'm a huge Indiana Jones and Harrison Ford fan so for anyone who likes history archaeology kind of those adventure things um, that's full look for you so I'm very happy with that. 
Uh, so one of the fun facts about Marquette is that we are home to the St. Joan of Arc Chapel. Uh, and so oftentimes when you ask students what their favorite location on campus is, it is the chapel, regardless of their religious affiliation, because it is such a peaceful and tranquil location. Like it's surrounded by all this greenery. It's a great place for reflection. And it is the original St. Joan of Arc Chapel. Uh, we had an alum way back in the day who paid to ship it over to Milwaukee brick by brick. Um, so kind of a fun, fun location that you'll have to check out when you visit. Um, I think mine would be that you can actually see the Northern Lights from campus. Um, it's best to go up to Cornucopia, which is about 30 minutes from campus, but you can actually see them from just our main mall <laughs> on a good night for sure. But yeah. Awesome. I keep having to follow Tori. How do I beat the Northern Lights? Um, <laughs> But I, I mean, this is a bit of a cop out, but you know, I didn't get a chance to talk about the city of Madison earlier. And I think that's one of the best parts about UW Madison. Um, you know, I come from rural Pennsylvania. I think it's such a novel idea. I can walk to work. I can walk to the grocery store. It's such a manageable size, manageable city. Uh, you know, it's a city for all four seasons. There's always something to do. There's great restaurants. Uh, so I think that's definitely one of the best, uh, biggest draws of UW Madison is Madison itself. I want to head up and see the Northern Lights too. Um, so the University of Alabama is the most hashtagged college campus uh, on Instagram with the hashtag Roll Tide. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, just because we have one more, I'm gonna pose one question, uh, one last one, I promise. This is the last one. I wanna make sure we're getting the most of our time. Um, but I want you all to kind of think about uh, you yourselves as the reps, like if you could go back to freshman year, I, you, you know, it, besides the advice you've already given, if you yourself can go back to freshman year, what is something you wish you could have told yourself to do that you didn't do? Another hard question. <laughs> um, I really think, you know, with liberal arts, especially you can um, explore so many different subjects and disciplines, but often students are, you know, I'm bad at math, I'm gonna avoid math, or I hate art, I'm not gonna take an art class. Um, and I would advise strongly against that, you know, really try to explore everything you can, try it, just just try, you can drop it if you don't like it, but um, explore, because you never know if you'll end up liking that, so. Awesome, great advice. Um, I think my piece of advice would be to say yes more. I think sometimes you can get, and I speak from personal experience, you can get a little bogged down and worried about classes or sticking to what you know. But if you say yes to attending that club meeting with your roommate or uh, going to that hall event, you're gonna meet so many cool people. You're gonna expose yourself to so many um, more experiences that are really going to help shape who you become. Um, which is super fun to, to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my answer would be pretty similar. Um, I think getting involved and getting out and doing everything that you can on campus is really important. Um, I personally was really nervous to go out and go to like different events, but it's fun and it's a great way to meet other people and get to know the campus and the community. So get out there and do it. <laughs> I think my number one advice is, you know, take advantage of office hours, take advantage of things like tutoring. I mean, I went to a very large public rural high school that did not prepare me for college at all. So college was very much a shock. So I wish I'd taken advantage of office hours and tutoring earlier. It would have saved me a lot of headaches and grief. I would highly encourage you or myself back then to study abroad. I did take advantage of that. I got to spend two semesters abroad when I was in school. I spent one in Southern France and one in Kingston. Mm -hmm. And uh, that year of my life was absolutely life-changing. I probably learned the most of any other uh, time in my life. So do take advantage. You're not gonna get another chance to live somewhere, uh, experience a culture, learn a new language like that time uh, in college. So get out there and lots of us have scholarships to do so. 
All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us this evening. So after you close this window, there's going to be a very quick four-question uh, four survey that's going to appear. So make sure if you have the time to fill that out. And then if you want to sign up for more sessions, you can do so by going to the website that's below, strivescan.com slash Indiana. And that is where a recording will be made available of this session or any of the other ones that you want to go back over um, within about a week. Uh, have a great night. Good luck on the college admissions process and hope that you uh, took away some great nuggets tonight. Take care.